welcome to Book Spot. I'm Earl Weinberg. This time we will continue our reading of Have Spacesuit Will Travel by Robert Heinlein. Our hero Kip has lost consciousness from sheer cold after successfully planting an emergency beacon on Pluto. At least his last thoughts were he hoped it was successful. It was a darn short rest. I was just closing my eyes, feeling warm and happy that the mother thing thought I had done right, when Pee Wee started shaking my shoulder. She touched helmets. Kip, Kip, get up, please get up. Huh? Why? Because I can't carry you. I tried, I, but I can't do it. You're just too big. I considered it. Of course she couldn't carry me. Where did she get the silly notion that she could? I was twice her size. I'd carry her just as soon as I caught my breath. Kip, please get up. She was crying now, blubbering. Why, sure, honey, I said gently, if that's what you want. I tried, and I had a clumsy bad time of it. She almost picked me up. She helped a lot. Once up, she steadied me. Turn around, walk. She almost did carry me. She got her shoulders under my right arm and kept pushing. Every time we came to one of those blown out panels, she either helped me step over or simply pushed me through and helped me up again. At last we were in the lock and she was bleeding air from inside to fill it up. She had to let go of me and I sank down. She turned when the inner door opened, started to say something, then got my helmet off in a hurry. I took a deep breath and got very dizzy and the lights dimmed. She was looking at me. You all right now? Me? Sure. Why shouldn't I be? Let me help you inside. I couldn't see why, but she did help, and I needed it. She sat me on the floor near the door with my back to the wall. I didn't want to lie down. Kip, I was so scared. Why? I couldn't see what she was worried about. Hadn't the mother thing said that we had all done all right? Well, I was. I shouldn't have let you go out. But the beacon had to be set. Oh, but you set it? Of course. The mother thing was pleased. I'm sure she would have been, she said gravely. She was. Can I do anything? Can I help you out of your suit? Uh, no, not yet. Could you find me a drink of water? Right away. She came back and held it for me. I wasn't as thirsty as I had thought. It made me feel a bit ill. She watched me for some time, then said, Do you mind if I'm gone a little while? Will you be all right? Me? Certainly. I didn't feel well. I was beginning to hurt, but there wasn't anything she could do. I won't be long. She began clamping her helmet, and I noticed with detached interest that she was wearing her own suit. Somehow I had had the impression she had been wearing Tim's. I saw her head for the lock and realized where she was going and why. I wanted to tell her that the mother thing would rather not be inside here where she might, uh, where she might, I didn't want to say spoil even to myself, but Pee Wee was gone. I don't think she was away more than five minutes. I had closed my eyes and I'm not sure. I noticed the inner door open. Through it stepped Pee Wee carrying the mother thing in her arms like a long piece of firewood. She didn't bend at all. Pee-wee put the mother thing on the floor in the same position I had last seen her, then unclamped her helmet and bawled. I couldn't get up. My legs hurt too much, and my arms. Pee-wee, Pee Pee-wee, please, honey, it, it, it doesn't do any good. She raised her head. I'm all through. I won't cry anymore. And she didn't. We sat there a long time. Pee Wee again offered to help me out of my suit, but when we tried it, I hurt so terribly, especially my hands and feet, that I had to ask her to stop. She looked worried. Kip, I'm afraid you froze them. Maybe, but there's nothing to do about it now. I winced and changed the subject. Where did you find your suit? Oh, she looked indignant, then almost gay. You'd never guess. Inside Jock's suit. No, I guess I wouldn't. The purloined letter. The what? Nothing. I hadn't realized that old Wormface had a sense of humor. 
Shortly after that, we had another quake, a bad one. Chandeliers would have jounced if the place had had any, and the floor heaved. Pee-wee squealed. Oh, that was almost as bad as the last one. A lot worse, I'd say. The first little one wasn't anything. No, I mean the one while you were outside. Was there one then? Didn't you feel it? No, I tried to remember. Maybe that was when I fell off in the snow. You fell off? Kip! It was all right. Oscar helped me. There was another ground shock. I wouldn't have minded, only it shook me up and made me hurt worse. I finally came out of the fog enough to realize that I didn't have to hurt. Let's see. Medicine pills were on the right, and the codeine dispenser was farthest back. Pee-wee, could I trouble you for some water again? Of course. I'm going to take codeine. It may make me sleep. Do you mind? You ought to sleep if you can. You need it. I suppose so. What time is it? She told me, and I couldn't believe it. You mean it's been more than 12 hours? Huh? Since what? Since this started? I don't understand, Kip. She stared at her watch. It has been exactly an hour and a half since I found you. Not quite two hours since the mother thing set off the bombs. <clears throat> I couldn't believe that either. But Pee-wee insisted that she was right. The codeine made me feel much better, and I was beginning to be drowsy when Pee-wee said, Kip, do you smell something? I sniffed. Something like kitchen matches? That's what I mean. I think the pressure is dropping, too. Kip, I think I'd better close your helmet if you're going to sleep. All right. You close yours, too? Yes. Uh, I don't think this place is tight any longer. You may be right. Between explosions and quakes, I didn't see how it could be. But while I knew what that meant, I was too weary and sick and getting too dreamy from the drug to worry. Now or a month from now, what did it matter? The mother thing had said everything was okay. Pee-wee clamped us in. We checked radios, and she sat down facing me and the mother thing. She didn't say anything for a long time. Then I heard, Pee-wee to Junebug. I read you, Pee-wee. Kip, it's been fun mostly, hasn't it? Huh? I glanced up and saw that the dial said I had about four hours of air left. I had had to reduce pressure twice since we closed up to match falling pressure in the room. Yes, Pee-wee, it's been swell. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. She sighed. I just wanted to make sure you weren't blaming me. Now go to sleep. I did almost go to sleep when I saw Pee-wee jump up and my phones came to life. Kip, something's coming in the door. I came wide awake, realized what it meant. Why couldn't they have let us be? A few hours, anyhow. Pee-wee, don't panic. Move to the far side of the door. You've got your blue light gadget? Yes. Pick them off as they come in. You've got to move, Kip. You're right where they will come. I can't get up. I hadn't been able to move, not even my arms, for quite a while. Use low power, then if you brush me, it won't matter. Do what I say, fast. Yes, Kip. She got where she could snipe at them sideways, raised her projector, and waited. The inner door opened. A figure came in. I saw Pee-wee start to nail it, and I called out into my radio, Don't shoot! But she was dropping the projector and running forward even as I shouted. They were mother thing people. It took six of them to carry me, only two to carry the mother thing. They sang to me soothingly all the time they were rigging a litter. I swallowed another codeine tablet before they lifted me, as even with their gentleness any movement hurt. It didn't take long to get me into their ship, for they had landed almost at the tunnel mouth, no doubt crushing the walkway. I hoped so. Once I was safely inside, Pee-wee opened my helmet and unzipped the front of my suit. Kip, aren't they wonderful? Yes, I was getting dizzier from the drug, but was feeling better. When do we raise ship? We've already started. They're taking us home? I'd have to tell Mr. Charton what a big help the codeine was. Huh? Oh, my, no. We're headed for Vega. I fainted. Chapter 9 I had been dreaming that I was home. 
a trill of music awoke me with a jerk. Mother thing. Good morning, my son. I'm happy to see that you are feeling better. Oh, I feel fine. I've had a good night's rest. I stared, then blurted, you're dead. I couldn't stop it. Her answer sounded warmly, gently humorous, the way you correct a child who's made a natural mistake. No, dear, I was merely frozen. I am not as frail as you seem to think me. I blinked and looked again. Then it wasn't a dream? No, it was not a dream. I thought I was home, and I tried to sit up, managed only to raise my head. I am home. My room. Closed closet on the left, hall door behind the mother thing, my desk on the right, piled with books and with a Centerville High pennant over it, window beyond it with the old elm almost filling it, sun-speckled leaves stirring in a breeze. My slipstick was where I had left it. Things started to wobble, then I figured it out. I had dreamed only the silly part at the end. Vega, I had been groggy with codeine. You brought me home. We brought you home? To your other home. My home. The bed started to sway. I clutched at it, but my arms didn't move. The mother thing was still singing. You needed your own nest, so we prepared it. Mother thing, I'm confused. We know that a bird grows well faster in its own nest, so we built yours. Bird and nest weren't what she sang, but an unabridged won't give you anything closer. I took a deep breath to steady down. I understood her. That's what she was best at, making you understand. This wasn't my room, and I wasn't home. It simply looked like it, but I was still terribly confused. I looked around and wondered how I could have been mistaken. The light slanted in the window from a wrong direction. The ceiling didn't have a patch in it from the time I built a hideout in the attic and knocked plaster down by hammering. It wasn't the right shade, either. The books were too neat and clean. They had that candy box look. I couldn't recognize the bindings. The overall effect was mighty close, but details were not right. I like this room, the mother thing was singing. It looks like you, Kip. Mother Thing, I said weakly, how did you do it? We asked you, and Pee-wee helped. I thought. But Pee-wee's never seen my room either, then decided that Pee-wee had seen enough American homes to be a consulting expert. Pee-wee is here. She'll be in shortly. With Pee-wee and the Mother Thing around, things couldn't be too bad, except, uh, Mother Thing, I can't move my arms and legs. She put a tiny warm hand on my forehead and leaned over me until her enormous lemur-like eyes blanked out everything else. You have been damaged. Now you are growing well. Do not worry. When the mother thing tells you not to worry, you don't. I didn't want to do handstands anyhow. I was satisfied to look into her eyes. You could sink into them. You could have dived in and swum around. All right, mother thing, I remembered something else. Say, you were frozen, weren't you? Yes. But look, when water freezes, it ruptures living cells, or so they say. She answered primly, my body would never permit that. Well, I thought about it. Just don't dunk me in liquid air. I'm not built for it. Again, her song held a roguish, indulgent humor. We shall endeavor not to hurt you. She straightened up and grew a little, swaying like a willow. I sense Pee-wee. There was a knock, another discrepancy. It didn't sound like a knock on the lightweight interior door of my room. And Pee-wee called out, may I come in? She didn't wait. I wondered if she ever did, but came on in. The bit I could see past her looked like our upper hall. They'd done a thorough job. Come in, dear. Sure, Pee-wee, you are in. Don't be captious. Look who's talking. Hi, kid. Hi, yourself. The mother thing glided away. Don't say, don't stay long, Pee-wee. You are not to tire him. I won't, mother thing. Bye, dears. I said, what are the visiting hours in this ward? When she says, of course, Pee-wee stood facing me, fists on hips. 
She was really clean for the first time in our acquaintance. Cheeks pink with scrubbing, hair fluffy. Maybe she would be pretty in about 10 years. She was dressed as always, but her clothes were fresh, all buttons present, tears invisibly mended. Well, she said, letting out her breath, I guess you're going to be worth keeping after all. Me? I'm in the pink. How about yourself? She wrinkled her nose. A little frost nip, nothing. But you were a mess. I was. I can't use adequate language without being what Mama calls unladylike. Oh, we wouldn't want you to be that. Don't be sarcastic. You don't do it well. You won't let me practice on you? She started to make a peewee retort, stopped suddenly, smiled, and came close. For a nervous second, I thought she was going to kiss me, but she just patted the bedclothes and said solemnly, You bet you can, Kip. You can be sarcastic or nasty or mean or scold me or anything, and I won't let out a peep. Why, I'll bet you could even talk back to the mother thing. I couldn't imagine wanting to. I said, take it easy, Pee-wee, your halo is showing. I'd have one if it weren't for you, or flunked my test for it, more likely. So, I seem to remember somebody about your size lugging me indoors almost piggyback. How about that? She wriggled. That wasn't anything. You set the beacon. That was everything. Each to his own opinion. It was cold out there. I changed the subject. It was embarrassing us. Mention of the beacon reminded me of something else. Pee-wee, where are we? Huh? In the mother thing's home, of course. She looked around and said, oh, I forgot, Kip. This isn't really your... I know, I said impatiently. It's a fake. Anybody can see that. They can. She looked crestfallen. I thought we'd done a perfect job. It's an incredibly good job. I don't see how you did it. Oh, your memory is most detailed. You must have a camera eye. And I must have spilled my guts, too, I added to myself. I wondered what else I'd said with Pee Wee listening. I was afraid to ask. The fellow ought to have some privacy. But it's still a fake, I went on. I know we're in the mother thing's home, but where's that? Oh, she looked round-eyed. I told you, maybe you don't remember, you were sleepy. I remember, I said slowly, something, but it didn't make sense. I thought you said we were going to Vega. Well, I suppose the catalogs were listed as Vega 5, but they call it, she threw back her head and vocalized. It recalled to me the Coxcrow theme in Le Coq d'Or. But I couldn't say that, so I told you Vega, which is close enough. I tried again to sit up, failed. You mean to stand there and tell me we're on Vega? I mean, a vegan planet? Well, you haven't asked me to sit down. I ignored the peewee-ism. I looked at sunlight pouring through the window. That light is from Vega? That stuff? That's artificial sunlight. If they had used real bright Vega light, it would look ghastly, like a bare arc light. Vega's way up the Russell diagram, you know. It is? I didn't know the spectrum of Vega. I had never expected to need to know it. Oh, yes. You be careful, Kip. When you're up, I mean, in 10 seconds, you can get more burn than all winter in Key West, and 10 minutes would kill you. I seem to have a gift for winding up in difficult climates. What star class was Vega? A, maybe? Probably B. All I knew was that it looked big and bright and bigger than the sun and looked pretty set in Lyra. But where was it? How and in the name of Einstein did we get here? Pee-wee, how far is Vega? No, I mean, how far is the sun? You wouldn't happen to know? Of course, she said scornfully. 27 light years. Great galloping gorillas. Pee-wee, get that slide rule. You know how to push one? I don't seem to have the use of my hands. She looked uneasy. Um, what do you want it for? I want to see what that comes to in miles. Oh, I'll figure it. No need for a slide rule. A slipstick is faster and more accurate. Look, if you don't know how to use one, don't be ashamed. I didn't at your age. I'll show you. Of course I can use one, she said indignantly. You think I'm a stoop? But I'll work it out. Her lips moved silently. 1.59 times 10 to the 14th miles. I had done that Proxima Centauri problem recently. I remembered the miles in a light year and did a rough check in my head. Uh, call it six times 25 makes 150. And where was the decimal point? Your answer sounds about right. 
trillion miles. Too many zeros for comfort. Of course I'm right, she retorted. I'm always right. Goodness me, a handy dandy pocket encyclopedia. She blushed. I can't help being a genius, which left her wide open and I was about to rub her nose in it when I saw how unhappy she was. I remembered hearing dad say, some people insist that mediocre is better than best. They delight in clipping wings because they themselves can't fly. They despise brains because they have none. Pfft. I'm sorry, Pee Wee, I said humbly. I know you can't, and I can't help not being one, any more than you can help being little or I can help being big. She relaxed and looked solemn. I guess I was being a show-off again, she twisted a button. Or maybe I assumed that you'd understand me, like Daddy. I feel complimented. I doubt if I do, but from now on I'll try, she went on worrying the button. You're pretty smart yourself, kid. You know that, don't you? I grinned. If I were smart, would I be here? All thumbs and my ears rubbed together. Look, honey, would you mind if we checked you on the slide rule? I'm really interested. Twenty-seven light years. Why, well, you wouldn't be able to see the sun. It isn't any great shakes as a star. But I had made her uneasy again. Uh, Kip, that isn't much of a slide rule. What? Why, it's the best money. Can Kip, please, it's part of the desk. It's not a slide rule. Huh? I looked sheepish. I forgot. Um, I suppose the hall out there doesn't go very far? Just what you can see, Kip. The slide rule would have been real if we'd had time enough. They understand logarithms. Oh, indeed they do. That was bothering me. Time enough, I mean. Pee-wee, how long did it take us to get here? Twenty-seven light years, even at light speed. Well, maybe the Einstein business would make it seem like a quick trip, but not to Centerville. Dad could be dead. Dad was older than mother, old enough to be my grandfather, really. Another 27 years back? Why, that would make him well over a hundred. Even mother might be dead. Time to get here? It didn't take any. No, no, I know it feels like that. You're not any older. I'm still laid up with frostbite, but it took at least 27 years, didn't it? What are you talking about, Kip? The relativity equations. You've heard of them? Oh, those certainly, but they don't apply. It didn't take time. Oh, 15 minutes to get out of Pluto's atmosphere, about the same to cope with the atmosphere here, but otherwise, pff, zero. At the speed of light, you would think so. No, Kip, she frowned, then her face lighted up. How long was it from the time you set the beacon till they rescued us? Huh? It hit me. Dad wasn't dead. Mother wouldn't even have gray hair. Maybe an hour. A little over. It would have been less if they had had a ship ready. Then they might have found you in the tunnel instead of me. No time for the message to reach here. Half an hour frittered away, a ship getting a ship ready. The mother thing was vexed. I hadn't known she could be. You see, a ship is supposed to be ready any time she wants one. Any and all the time. The mother thing is important. Another half hour in atmosphere maneuvers, and that's all. Real time. None of those fancy contractions. I tried to soak it up. They take an hour to go 27 light years and get balled out for dallying. Dr. Einstein must be known as Whirly Gig Albert to his cemetery neighbors. But how? Kip, do you know any geometry? I don't mean Euclid, I mean geometry. Uh, I've fiddled with open and closed curved spaces. I've read Dr. Bell's popular books, but you couldn't say I know any geometry. At least you won't boggle at the idea that a straight line is not necessarily the shortest distance between two points. She made motions as if squeezing a grapefruit in both hands. Because it's not. Kip, it all touches. You could put it in a bucket, in a thimble if you folded it so the spins matched. I had a dizzying picture of a universe compressed into a teacup. Nucleons and electrons packed solidly, really solid, not the thin mathematical ghost that even uranium nuclei are said to be. Something like the primal atom the cosmologists used to explain the expanding universe. Well, maybe it's both, packed and expanding, like the wave particle paradox. A particle isn't a wave, and a wave can't be a particle, yet everything is both. If you can believe in wavicles, you can believe in anything. And if you don't, then don't bother to believe at all, not even in yourself, because that's what you are, wavicles. How many dimensions? I've asked weakly. How many would you like? 
me uh, 20 maybe four more for each of the first four to give some looseness at the corners 20 isn't even a starter i don't know kip i don't know geometry either i just thought i did so i've pestered them the mother thing her oh heavens no she doesn't know geometry just enough to pilot a ship in and out of the folds only that much I should have stuck to advanced finger painting and never let dad lure me into trying for an education. There isn't any end. The more you learn, the more you need to know. Pee-wee, you know what that beacon was for, didn't you? Me? She looked innocent. Well, yes. You knew we were going to Vega? Well, if the beacon worked, if it was set in time, now the prize question. Why didn't you tell me? Well... Pee-wee was going to twist that button off. I wasn't sure how much math you knew, and you might have gone all masculine and commonsensical and father knows best. Would you have believed me? I told Orville, and I told Wilbur, and now I'm telling you that contraption will never work. Well, maybe not, Pee-wee, but next time you're tempted not to tell me something for my own good, will you take a chance that I'm not wedded to my own ignorance? I know I'm not a genius, but I'd try to keep my mind open, and I might be able to help if I knew what you were up to. Quit twisting that button. She let go hastily. Yes, Kip, I'll remember. Thanks. Another thing is fretting me. I was pretty sick. Huh? We certainly were. All right. They've got these um, fold ships that go anywhere in no time. Why didn't you ask them to bounce me home and pop me into a hospital? She hesitated. How do you feel? Huh? I feel fine, except I seem to be under spinal anesthesia or something. Or something, she agreed. But you feel as if you're getting well? Shucks, I feel well. You aren't, but you're going to be, she looked at me closely. Shall I put it bluntly, Kip? Go ahead. If they had taken you to Earth, the best hospital we have, you'd have been a basket case. Understand me? No arms, no legs. As it is, you are completely getting well. No amputations, not even a toe. I think the mother thing had prepared me. I simply said, you're sure? Sure, sure both. You're going to be all right. She suddenly screwed her face up. Oh, you were a mess. I'm, I saw. Pretty bad? Awful. I have nightmares. They shouldn't have let you look. They couldn't stop me. I was next of kin. Huh? You told them you were my sister or something? What? I am your next of kin. I was about to say she was cockeyed when I tripped over my tongue. We were the only humans for 160 trillion miles. As usual, Pee Wee was right. So I had to grant permission, she went on. For what? What did they do to me? Uh, first they popped you into liquid helium. They left you there and the past month they've been using me as a guinea pig. Then three days ago, three of our days, they thawed you out and got to work. You've been getting well ever since. What shape am I in now? Um, well, you're growing back. Kip, this isn't a bed. It just looks like it. What is it then? We don't have a name for it, and the tune is pitched too high for me. But everything from here on down, she patted the spread, on into the room below, does things for you. You're wired like a hi-fi nuts basement. I'd like to see it. I'm afraid you can't. You don't know, Kip. They had to cut your spacesuit off. I felt more emotion at that than I had on hearing what a mess I'd been. Hunt? Where's Oscar? Do they ruin him? My spacesuit, I mean? I know what you mean. Every time you're delirious, you talk to Oscar and you answer back, too. Sometimes I think you're schizoid, Kip. You're, you've mixed your terms, Runt. That'd make me a split personality. All right, but you're a paranoid yourself. Oh, I know. I've known that for a long time, but I'm a very well-adjusted one. You want to see Oscar? The mother thing said you would want him near you when you woke up. She opened the closet. Hey, you said they cut him up. Oh, they repaired him. Good as new. A little better than new. Time, dear. Remember what I said. Coming, mother thing. Bye, Kip. I'll be back soon and real often. Okay, leave the closet open so I can see Oscar. And there we leave Kip, or most of him. Recovering in a hospital on a planet around Vega, a mere 27 light years from home. And we'll continue his adventures next time.